Hey guys, welcome back to Ask Cam Doc. My name's Shane and I'm a final year medical student and neuroscience supervisor at the University of Cambridge. And today we're talking about the interviews at Cambridge. So as you guys know, I'm a supervisor at the University of Cambridge, but I'm also involved in the interviewing process and therefore I have a little bit of insight into what goes on, what we look out for. So I thought, why not share that insight with you guys? So I'm going to split this video up into three main parts. Firstly, I'll give a general structure to the interview and what to expect. Secondly, I'll go on and talk about what we expect from our candidates and lastly I'll speak about some do's and don'ts during your interview. As always I'll timestamp all of this so you can jump to whatever section that you're most interested in. As you guys know Cambridge like Oxford is a collegiate university. What that means is it's made up of loads of different colleges and as a result you'll get an interview offer from a specific college rather than the university as a whole. Okay but what does that actually mean in terms of the interviewing process? Well, that means that different colleges have slightly different ways in how they run these interviews. Some colleges run three interviews, some run two, some are more scientific, some focus on other aspects like your personal statement and more of the soft questions like why medicine and why Cambridge? So as a result, everything that I say today might not be totally accurate for all the colleges, but it's a general guide and it's pretty good for majority of the colleges. So the first thing I want to talk about then is the structure of the Cambridge interview and what to expect. So let's say that you applied to Downing College and they've offered you an interview. Downing College actually invites you to two interviews, both run on the same day with a small gap in between. In each interview, there'll be two interviewers with differing specialties. On the interview day, you'll turn up maybe five minutes before the interview, you'll be waiting outside the room and the interviewers will call you in. You'll go in and then they'll do a general introduction, a bit of chit chat just to calm you down and relax you into the environment. So after they're done with the general introductions and chit chat, you'll dive into the main part of the interview. In the main part, the first interviewer will ask you a relatively basic question. It might be something that you've already covered, but more often it's a concept that you might never have come across before. However, the parts and the basic concepts you should be familiar with. So they'll ask you that relatively basic or simple question from the beginning and they'll invite you to give your response and then they'll ask more difficult and progressive questions just to figure out how you think and if you can develop an idea. Then the first interviewer rounds up their line of questioning and the second interviewer begins theirs. As I mentioned, the interviewers have differing specialties and as a result, it's gonna be a different topic that you're going to get questioned on. Then at the very end you might get a bit of a curveball question that's kind of out of the box. I remember mine being you have a cup of water with an ice cube in it. The ice cube melts, what happens to the water level? So essentially it's just there to kind of see how you think on the spot. It's not like a question, a mathematical question that you might have come across before, but it's just to see how you can develop an idea, use basic principles to answer those questions. Then after that they round off the interview and say their goodbyes and you leave the room. After a short gap you then go into the, your second interview and pretty much the same thing happens all over again. So that's true for Downing College but I know many other colleges have three interviews and in the third interview they quiz you a little bit more on what you said on your personal statement and more soft questions like why Cambridge, why do you want to do medicine etc. That being said majority of the colleges do focus on the science and a lot of your questions are going to be scientifically based. So definitely prepare for both elements and don't neglect either of them. Right, so now let's talk about what we're looking for when we interview a candidate. Essentially, what we're looking for when we're interviewing a student is, do I want to teach that person and will they do well here at Cambridge? Okay, so what does that actually mean and what are the specific things that I'm looking out for? I'm looking out for someone who can think, basically. So when I introduce a pretty difficult concept or a topic that you're actually going to encounter in your first, second, or even third year at university, essentially, I want you to use your basic concepts and basic principles to get hold of the problem that I've presented you and develop it. Show me your thinking and develop that idea. Ask plenty of questions because I want someone who is willing to learn. I want someone who's enthusiastic about a topic or a subject. These are the features I'm looking out for when I'm interviewing someone. Being enthusiastic, showing willingness to learn, being able to think and develop ideas. So now I'm gonna run through some points that you should be doing during the interview to show me that yes, you are someone that I do want to teach and yes, you are someone who's going to do well here in Cambridge. The first thing and something that you would have heard almost everywhere is think out loud. I do not want to see a candidate not speaking at any point. I want them to just verbal diarrhea whatever they're thinking because one, it shows me that you are thinking and it shows me your thought process and it also shows me you're developing the idea 
Secondly, go back to basics. Never forget that all these questions, topics are very complex and you're not going to have come across these things as they're given to you but you would have come across the basic, simpler concepts that make up this more complex topic. So go back to basics, go back to the A-level things that you do know and that you have learnt and use that. Start with that if that helps and then say, okay, well, this is similar to something that I learnt here. Based on this, I think this might be going on. Just in that way, you have opened up a dialogue with the interviewer and you're showing them two things. One, you can think, but also you're someone who can break down the problem into simpler things. That Therefore, you've shown them problem solving skills as well. The final definitely do for your interviews is ask questions. Ask plenty of questions to clarify things, ask plenty of questions to progress the idea. Make sure that you're actually engaging with the interviewer because at the end of the day, the interview is really like a supervision that I normally run. I introduce a topic to you and you ask me questions, I ask you questions and we progress that way. If you're not asking me questions and you're not engaging with me, I don't know if you're enthusiastic about the topic, I don't know if you're willing to learn. So it's very, very important to show the interviewer that you are all of these things by asking Asking plenty of questions and not being shy about it. Now let's move on to some don'ts and things to avoid. So like I mentioned before, do not give up. Don't ever say, sorry, I don't know, and stop at that. Always go back to basics and use that as a building block to finally answering the question that you have been asked. Secondly, don't be arrogant. Always be humble with your answers and always be humble with basically taking some sort of L because at some point you're going to be told, sorry, no, that's not quite right. Here is why, etc., and move through with it. Don't be that arrogant person who's like, oh yeah, yeah, sorry, no, that's what I meant. That's not what we're looking for. If we see that from a student, we automatically know this person isn't the best type of person to teach. They're not going to be someone who recognizes their errors and mistakes and learns from it and opens their minds and grows it. Definitely be humble, try to be be liked as much as possible. It will really go a long way. And lastly, don't be thrown off by any complex or unexpected questions, especially like the one that I mentioned before with the cup of water with the ice. I remember being like, what the hell? We were talking about DNA replication before. Why are we talking about ice and water and stuff now? But I wasn't thrown off or I tried my best not to be thrown off by going back to the simpler basic things that I did know. And I was just like describing what I could almost see in my mind. I was like, okay, cup of water, there's gonna be a water level. Normally when you put something in water, the level rises, but now you're telling me it's already in there, what's gonna happen after it melts, and then, mm, okay, I'm not too sure, maybe it stays the same, because it's already there. And then he's like, okay, yeah, have you heard of Archimedes principle? And we kind of work through it based on that. So essentially, I try my best not to panic and go quiet or silent or be thrown off. I essentially just basically spoke out loud what I could imagine in my mind and what I would normally expect in terms of, you know, kind of day-to-day -day stuff that I've seen. So there you have it. That was a brief introduction into the medical school interviews here at Cambridge. Hopefully you guys now know what to expect and you also got a pretty good idea of what other things we're looking for in a student and some do's and don'ts during the interview. So hopefully you guys found this video very helpful and if you have, please like, follow, share and subscribe and I'll see you guys next time.